USDA reports out today. Elaine Cub is our market analyst. And, uh, you know, we were promised a show here, Elaine. And looking at the markets now, they closed. We didn't really get it. You know, it really doesn't look like that looking at the close. Um, you know, corn, the official close is up 10 cents for this historic day. And soybeans, the official close is down for the deferred contracts. But when you look at the entire trading day, if you look at the range of prices that these that these markets explored throughout the day, it really was a pretty volatile day. I mean, the soybeans were down as much as 25 cents throughout the day, and corn did, you know, explore a lot of territory today. And I think that sort of matches the sort of mixed the mixed uh, signals that we got from this wide array of reports on this January report day. One of the things that uh, you know we were looking for was the number for corn for the harvest of 2012, and the final yield yeah. across the country is 123.4 bushels per acre. Uh, production is 10.8. Is that number right on, you know, or close to it for you? Well, I think that's. I mean, that's the number. That's the number for decades and hundreds of years. When people look back at the drought of 2012 and look at the official data, that's the number they're going to get. And I think it's a little interesting that USDA managed to come up with slightly more harvested acreage in their January report than they've been showing in the November and December reports. So I don't know where they found that, but, you know, this is the number. And I think um, that, that it's valid. I mean, this is a huge drop down from a year ago. You know, it was 17 percent less in the stocks that we yeah. have going into the next quarter. And I think that was really the biggest thing. The biggest reminder that the market needed was that we have a very low supply of corn going into the next few months. There's 8 billion bushels of corn, and we haven't been this low already since 1994. And think about what yields were like in 1994. We've completely changed what the demand, what the end users have to deal with this year, and it's, it's a tight situation. What does that mean for selling then? What does that mean for selling is that I think you're looking at another summer, spring, summer, a very tight basis situation. We already see that now. The average basis in the nation is like only four cents below the March contract. So I think that will continue to be hot through the next few months. But you've also got that the price itself may have to really compete to pull this out of farmers' hands. You know, I think particularly in Iowa and the eastern Corn Belt, where when farmers were harvesting corn, they were really worried about aflatoxin. I don't think a lot of people wanted to store their corn. So this really showed, you know, how little of it is still on the farm and how hard, you know, merchandisers are going to have to bid to try and get it. So I think we could be looking at, an, at a trend change. I mean, this day could be the day that a trend change came, comes in for the old crop market especially and, uh, and it starts to bring prices higher. Now, whether that can drag the new crop market up with it, I will see. Yeah, for soybeans, the bulls were looking for something. They were looking for some sort of news that would bring it back up. And uh, November contract went down today. So what does that mean for soybeans overall? You know, and I think if they had looked hard enough, they could have put a kind of bullish spin on this because the world soybean ending stocks number actually came down. The Argentinian production right. estimate went down about, you know, 1 million metric tons, and the Brazilian soybean number came up about 1.5 million metric tons, but the total world number actually came down in the ending stocks. So I think you could put a bullish spin on that, but like you say, I mean, in the markets, that, that doesn't show that this was, you know, a down day. And the, the idea being that all of this was pretty well known by the market going into this. Um, the domestics use here was very good. The crushings came up, the estimate did, and the exports we know have been very strong. So they're just, I just think there wasn't enough new news for the market to be bullish for soybeans. But I think if we do experience a trend change in corn, you know, this whole sector, wheat is, had some bullishness today, so the whole sector may start to come up. Yeah, quickly in wheat. Uh still not great conditions across the country, still drought oh. conditions with not much relief. Uh, is that still a commodity that kind of controls itself? Yeah, and I think that that's something that it's finally starting to be recognized as this quite a bullish story. Um, I think just the time frame of it is, is that the market is not going to react to a drought in February or January or February. They, they, it just kind of never does. It needs to get closer into the spring before it really starts to react to that. But even though the winter wheat seedings were up from last year, you know, that was mostly in the east. So your hard red winter wheat varieties, the kind of varieties that are grown here in Nebraska, and the Nebraska seedings were not up from 2011. But um, the, the Kansas City contract, I think, is definitely in a, in a bullish situation, fundamentally speaking, because you have that drought and because that's not where the higher acreage is coming from. What do we look to now? Do we look to South America? Do we look to uh, maybe Washington when they talk about uh, extending a debt ceiling in February? I mean, what's the, the what's volatility now? 
Yeah, you know, the dollar has been very, very volatile through the past week or so. It's gone up to a fresh three-month high, and then within the past couple of days, it has been collapsing. So I think from day to day, that dollar could still be an outside influence in the, in the grain markets. But I think um, as far as the speculative money flowing in and out, that has been such a problem, I don't know, problem, but it's been a big influence over the past couple of months. I think that might start to quiet down that we've got the money coming back in that wants to come back in and it may not be as large as it was in 2012. We might have a smaller population of speculative traders in 2013. And that's fine because these futures markets will still have to reflect the, you know, the fundamental value of supply and demand of these markets going forward. So I think that's what we're going to see is, is grain stories, you know, stories that really reflect what's going on in grain. USDA reports out this morning. Elaine Cub with us. Elaine, thanks for the time. We appreciate you joining us. Thanks for having me.